Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we have some absolutely fantastic news. I've had to re-record the intro to this video because Blizzard dropped a little bit of a bombshell. Patch 7.2, the Tomb of Sagaris, is releasing on the 28th of this month, which makes this video even more pressing. This video will be an overview of all of the content that you can expect in this patch. So that's basically all the stuff you can go and do on your character. Kicking off next week, I will have a series of guides covering all of the most important things in the patch and a few cool little things that I've uh, worked out that uh, should, you know, provide a little bit of fun for you uh, in the patch. Anyway, let's get right into the video. Also, be sure to check out the channel tomorrow. It's going to be my big biggest announcement ever and the good news is it's something you'll be able to download and actually play. The Broken Shore kicks off with a scenario that covers our attempts to establish a foothold on the island after our tremendous failure last time. It's a pretty short bit of content, but you know, it's it's pretty damn well done. You got some key characters there. It's, it's a good time. Now, once we do that, we are set up on the island. We've got our base and that's when the core content actually kicks off. One of the main things that we'll be doing during these, um, you know, our time on the island is the world quests. There are quite a few of them to spread out uh, just overall across the island and it's it seems like there's a lot of daily variants there. These do feel quite similar to the world quests that many of us will of course already be used to, but they have made an effort to include more interesting quests with some non-standard mechanics, which is certainly appreciated. Rewards are similar to what you're getting currently and are roughly on par with the rest of the Broken Isles. However, the main difference is that you do get Legion Fall reputation from them and then also building resources. Now, these resources bring me on to the next core system, the building system. There are three different buildings inside the um, Legion Fall base on the Broken Shore. These give you a range of benefits um, that are pretty much all very desirable. Now, these are built using the resources um, that I mentioned when talking about the world quests. These uh, buildings are actually built region-wide by players, so personally, you might not have that much say in what gets built next, but... Uh, you know, actually contributing to the construction of them will earn you a loot bag, so of course it's worth doing. Now what I do like here is that the buildings have good tangible effects that should be pretty enjoyable once you actually have them. Of course, the Legion don't like any of this and they will try to destroy our buildings. This doesn't really manifest itself in so far as gameplay goes. It basically just means that the buildings only last for so long before they get destroyed. And once that happens, we do need to indeed rebuild them again. So you will be repeatedly constructing buildings to unlock the, um, the benefits that you want. On top of that, there's actually a short quest line that you'll unlock shortly after doing the scenario that really kicks off this patch's main world content. Doing this quest line will unlock the new artifact traits for your weapon. You essentially just get the current like 54 rank trait kind of baked into your weapon as your 35th. Any artifact power that's left over from all of this is refunded and can be immediately spent on new traits. You also have artifact knowledge ranks going all the way up to 50 with a far more aggressive curve, such that brute forcing your, um, you know, your trade up to say 65 at the start of the patch is going to make zero sense given how the artifact knowledge increases uh, really quite greatly over time. So they're trying to de-incentivize uh, de the rapid farming of AP. Now, the Broken Shore also has multiple rare mobs. They'll drop, uh, you know, your resources and stuff like that, similar to, say, the Timeless Isle or Tanan Jungle. There are also some new world bosses, which drop uh, 890 gear. Some of these are familiar faces, like, say, Brutalis. So overall, that's pretty cool. They also have a new mob grind system that is basically a layer of game design over what uh, we might have been doing in, say, the Timeless Isles. I remember killing all the frogs there to get the uh, to get the coins. Now, one of the new currencies in this patch is Nether Shards, and uh, you get these from Legion Invasions, which uh, I'll talk about in a bit, and also the Broken Shore mobs. And this is where this Sentinax uh, system actually comes in. So the Sentinax is basically a Legion spaceship. It hovers over the area you can see it in the map. Mobs underneath it have a chance of dropping a reinforcement beacon. Now, there are multiple different types of beacon with increasing levels of difficulty. And when you use the beacon, it spawns in a portal, which is seemingly at a fixed location, and then that sends a whole bunch of mobs at you. These mobs can then drop even more reinforcement beacons, and so on and so forth. Uh, there will likely be large groups of players doing this content together, and I'd say it will be quite the visual treat based on what I've seen on the PTR, especially when world boss tier enemies 
end up pouring through these portals. It really is quite cool. I think that this is a really cool system to dip into and out of, and it serves as a nice balance between the world quest style content on the island. Now, there's also gear tokens. There's um, sort of one type of gear token for new alts, and there's another one which also has a chance of dropping a legendary item, quite similar to the Baleful gear from Tanan Jungle. And then there's also just some pets and toys and stuff like that on offer. We then have the Legion Fall campaign, which is rather similar to the Garrison campaign back in Warlords. Basically, you get a new quest every single week that's sort of higher quality content that you can do uh, on your character. One of the earlier quests in that chain will give you a new champion for your class order hall, which is pretty nice. Now, this used to be required for Draenor Pathfinder, like completing all 11 weeks worth of quests, but that is no longer the case. Now, I haven't actually seen these on the PTR. Um, I think Blizzard are trying to kind of keep them a secret, but basically there are new challenging bits of content for each class that will unlock a new weapon skin. I've actually covered the new skins in a video, which you can check out. Uh, sounds really awesome. And in a recent Q&A, Matt Gross actually said that these are designed to be really hard now um, and they, they actually don't scale with gear. So really it seems rather similar to the entire Warlock, Green Fire, uh, you know, the fight at the very end of that in patch 5.2, which, you know, if they manage to do that for every class, then, you know, tip of the hat to them, I think that would be great. Now, there is also a short quest line to get your class mount. This happens after you've done, I believe, your order hall campaign and um, you unlock Broken Isles Flight. They are, for the most part, you know, the small bits of content, but they're pretty great, and I think the new class mounts do look quite wonderful. Finally, on the topic of order halls, there are some new upgrades. Now, the final one used to be related to your artifact weapon, but they actually changed it. It's now simply just a chance of getting double AP from a world quest, and that's most of the new stuff. Oh, you'll also get a uh, new champion from the um, from the class order hall quest. All right, let's talk about Legion invasions. These occur from time to time, and they're designed to be a quite time efficient bit of content to do. They're supposed to be kind of uncommon, but they give you a bigger reward when you actually do them. The first stage of these is essentially a series of world quests. They basically just replace the current set of world quests in the zone with a new set that are all Legion themed, and they generally do a very good job of putting like a cool visual twist on areas and content that we've actually seen before. So I think that's a really cool thing, um, visually anyway. Once we actually complete those, we then unlock a scenario. This is basically to go up to the Legion command ship and take out its leader. Overall, this content is a great source of nether shards and normal world quest rewards. Very much worth doing them when they appear and they can also drop 860 plus gear. So it's something that's quite good for gearing up your alts. Okay, with all that done, let's talk about instance PvE content. Dungeoneers are getting some new stuff. The Cathedral of Eternal Night is a very fun new dungeon, a bit in the shorter side, not that that is a bad thing. The quality overall of this instance is great, and it's also going to be available on Mythic Plus, so you'll, uh, you'll be doing that for months to come. Now, speaking of Mythic Plus, the upper and lower Karazhan are now Heroic, Mythic, and Mythic Plus. So we're actually getting three new dungeons being added to the Mythic Plus pool, which should give you a lot more gameplay variety. They've also rebalanced the rewards to put more artifact power into the weekly chest and to make artifact power scale with the length of the dungeon. So we'll no longer have that annoying mob of soul situation where only one or two are really that desired as far as keystones go. Now we need to talk about the Tomb of Sagaris. It's not coming in the patch. It will be unlocked after the patch. It looks like they'll do an update called like 7.2.5, which will unlock the raid and give you some small game updates. But don't worry, the raid's not coming out that soon. So you don't have to, you you know, rush through Nighthold or anything like that. But it is a new bit of content that technically is being added to the game client as of this patch. They've also changed up and updated rewards with dungeons. So normal dungeons are 825 now, Roics drop 845 and Mythic drops 865 with Mythic Plus being updated accordingly. Health and damage numbers have also been of course increased to compensate for this and they're adding in new Vanitas runes for Mythic Plus dungeons if you feel like you just need that little bit more power to tip you over the edge. Now then, PvP content. So PvP PvP progression is 50% faster at P uh, prestige rank zero. So basically you unlock your initial talents faster on an alt, which is pretty sweet. They've also increased XP from battlegrounds, though you probably won't be leveling up through them primarily anyway. Now then they've added the PvP brawl system, similar to the Overwatch brawls. Each week you get a new game mode that is a little bit out there as far as the design goes. Let's talk about some miscellaneous features. So hunters, druids, and death knights have had some updated animations. As a marksman uh, ship hunter main, I am very pleased 
plays at the work that they've done, the spec feels a lot more impactful to play and that's a massive plus because it was kind of lacking beforehand. There's also new transmog, um, a new transmog UI for tracking sets, which is pretty nice. Also pet battle dungeons are here, though I haven't uh, had much experience with them unfortunately. PvP ensemble sets have been added. These let you unlock the Season 1 and 2 appearances for 12 marks of honor in total, which I think is pretty nice if you just want to actually get that appearance. There's also uh, reportedly tab targeting changes. I haven't felt them that much on the PTR, but yeah, apparently they're there and will make tab targeting feel more consistent overall. And that's pretty much it for this kind of quick fire overview of all of the content broadly that is going to be coming in the new patch. This is pretty much what you can expect to be doing once the patch comes out. Overall though, looking pretty good, certainly a, a worthwhile uh, content update to the game. I do think that the world content is a bit stale right now, so it's definitely, you know, the timing is welcome. And it's very good that they don't seem to be planning to rushing Nighthold in, as that will reportedly be coming in in and around the same time as patch 7.2.5. But anyway, let me know what you think about this patch's content down in the comments. Uh, thank you very much for watching the video. Hope you found it useful, and I'll see you next time.